joking, sorry. <laughs> Just joking. Totally. Okay. Okay. How do we start? Hello, welcome to the Backstage Pass. I'm Amac. And I'm c -Note. We're really excited to bring you this show. We're on down to the debate. But then the solar flares happened and <laughs> the world's on the brink of ending or something. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But anyways, uh, we're the Backstage Pass. We, we are recording it now instead of streaming it live so we can upload this later and you can still see our smiling faces. <laughs> so this week we're actually backstage at the Wrigley Field Bar and Grill with the band Straight Line Stitch. Yep, and Beneath and, It All, who yeah, we had we on the show them. last week. We hung out with them, they are real cool, and uh, we had a good time there. We'll be showing you the video after the show. And uh, the rest of the show we got entertainment news brought to you by Indy on the Move. On Sunday, the Billboard had their annual award show. We want you to understand how they decide the winners. They decide by Nielsen SoundScan, radio airplay monitored by Nielsen BDS, streaming data measured by 2 Mobile and Nielsen BDS, social media consumption gauged by the next big sound, and tour grosses tracked by Billboard Box Score. One of the big winners was one of your favorite artists, right? It was Adele. She had 12 awards. She's awesome. Wow. LMFAO won six awards. Also, Coldplay and Lil Wayne had four each, while Casting Crowns, Jason Aldean, and Lady Gaga each won two. The top new artist, or the top artist of the year was... Was Adele. Yeah. The top male artist was Lil Wayne. The top new artist was Wiz Khalifa. And the top social artist of the year... Your favorite, Justin Bieber. <laughs> Why do you keep saying that? Because <laughs> we have the same... Hey, I got a haircut today. Oh, yeah. Where'd you get your haircut? Sports clips on cold water. Are they good? Big shout out to them. It was real cool. I got the MVP package. They just my face and okay. they gave me like a hot towel and washed my hair. And... You look relaxed. Pep it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite artists of all time, Stevie Wonder. He was honored with the Icon Award and is presented by one of my other most favorite artists of all time, Alicia Keys. She actually told him that she would put the award on his piano while he played so that he could look at it. <laughs> he was like. <laughs> Um, I like this one. I read it on the top 10 things from backstage. Number six, about halfway through the show, the unmistakable smell of marijuana began to permeate the backstage area. <laughs> Several inquiries were made about where it was coming from, though no one could positively identify the source. Huh. Number seven, speaking of Wiz Khalifa, <laughs> <laughs> Facebook launched a petition for Brooklyn Heights Squid Park to be renamed after MCA of the BC Boys. It's currently being transformed into a skate park, but Kathleen Hanna... Bikini Kill and Lay Tiger front woman and Adrock's wife writes on the Facebook wall for the petition that there's another Brooklyn Park in consideration for renaming. Um, she tells the petitioners, quote unquote, I just want to let you know that Adam Adrock Horowitz has already begun working with the Parks Commissioner to fix up and rename State Street Park, where MC actually played as a kid, to Adam Yanch Park. It'd be great to get people behind this idea as it would not hurt the Squibb family. And it would be awesome to fix up the basketball court there as a tribute. I think that's yes. a great idea. Yeah, that's nice. Um, Zach Wilde reported that he would fill in for Dimebag if there was a Pantera reunion. It's also noted that Vinnie Paul Abbott says he is his first choice. Yeah. Last week we discussed how the string cheese incident was scalping their own tickets. This week we'll share with you the alternatives. There's Tickly. Ticket Mob. And Ticket Script. Also... Eventbrite and crowd sponsor. They're joining, partnering together. Yeah, they're joining forces to ease the process of matching sponsors and events. Yeah. It's a good idea. Some bad news. Creed's working on a new album. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write that joke. <laughs> and this is the part of the show that we hate. Um, announcing musician deaths in the last week. Rest in peace to Donna Summer, the queen of disco. Robin Gibb of the Bee Gees. And Chuck Brown, the godfather of Go Go. Also, rest in peace. Oh, I was Wait, just, we gotta you, be like newscast. That's how you go go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Also, rest in Sorry. peace to Jabron Knox from Auburn, Indiana. He was hit with a missile while serving our country in Afghanistan. My former producer and best friend, my former producer Adam Sutton was best friends with him, and it's very sad. He really is a hero. I heard that he's a huge Taylor Swift fan, and she's actually gonna be at his funeral. And in her next music video, she's gonna wear his dog tags. Um, prayers and support go out to his family, friends, and his wife, who he had just married before he got deployed. We'll be like newscasters. Like, go from the sad things to the happy things. Yeah, let's pick we, it up. We don't want to be What else can we pick like it up with, Bethany? 
Talk about Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> he has a net worth of eighty million dollars. Hey, you wanna, you wanna make to some Forbes. money? <laughs> Justin Bieber. This is my plea to you. Sponsor me as an artist. Do you think he's watching? Maybe he'll invest yeah, in this. Yeah, I think so. The backstage pass needs sponsors too. He and his manager Scooter Brown have invested a substantial portion of it into technology. We're technology. We're, yeah, we're on that's the show. true. We support local music. We support Bieber, obviously. We talk about him. I did. I am. I will admit, I did watch the Justin Bieber movie, and I was impressed with uh, the fact that he decided really young to pursue music, and he did. He was out on the street corner playing his acoustic guitar really young and I respected that very much. And Scooter Braun actually put him on a van and, and took him everywhere so I, I, I've never seen it but I just told the story from my business partner. He knew what he wanted to do and he pursued it right away and I think that's the way to be successful. So it's dozen or so really tech investments include Tiny Chat, a social creation app called Stamped, um, Gamer Soho Studios and the music format Spotify. These deals aren't the usual equity endorsement deals according to Forbes. Bieber put $250,000 or more in cash into each of the dozen or so startups in his portfolio. And unlike most celebrity investments, few of the companies he's involved with have ever promoted their ties to the singer. In fact, Spotify won't even discuss Bieber's involvement with Forbes. Wow. So we want to ask you, the, the, the audience and the viewers, why do you think Spotify does not want to discuss this? And why do you think they do not want to be tied to Justin Bieber? Tweet to us at Twitter, at the Backstage Pass, D-A, Backstage Pass. Yeah or post on our Facebook wall what you think. All right, now moving on to our next segment, one of my favorites, shows that don't suck. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight, we have E... I guess it doesn't matter now, because yeah, we're not live. Yeah, you can't announce that, we're not live. <laughs> e Barzalay came to Fort Wayne for one like you can tell. Are you have this posted by tomorrow? <laughs> you can't I guess, that I guess we'll find out. Um, <laughs> Thursday night, my friend Kenny Taylor is at Club Soda. The Battle of the Bands um, continues on. Make sure you vote for our friends the Yellow Dead Buddies as they take right. on Knucklehead, Effing Panthers, and Days of the Falcon. And um, Scarlet Fever will be at that show, handing out $2 off coupons at the Battle of the Bands for the Burlesque show the next day. Vote YDB! Alright. Next show he means is the Yellow Dead Buddies with Scarlet Fever and California Cupcake Company. That's Rock and Burlesque at 4D's Bar and Grill in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Out on Lima Road? Yep, 10 p.m. And that show does cost $8 unless you go get that coupon on six. Thursday. Yeah. That's right. Then also Friday we have the Twain Gang at Beamers for nine for, at 9.30, <laughs> no cover. Left Lane Cruiser at the Last String Bar and Grill, 10 p.m., no cover. Yep, Saturday night we have Kenny Taylor with Phil's Family Lizard. Unlikely Alibi, the Tone Junkies, and the Dive Kings. That's actually the Beatle Fest. Brought to you by Rock 104. And that's at One Summit Square from 5 to 9 p.m. It's actually free, too. All these people, like, wow. Wow, that's a good lineup to be free. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We also, also <laughs> go ahead. let's say it together. We also have. <laughs> we have the, jo the Jonases at Scully's. The Joneses. The Joneses <laughs> at Scully's Boneyard at 10 p.m. No it's cover. Free too. Yeah. A lot of free shows. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's not free, but it's worth your money. Reckon at the Wrigley Field Bar and Grill. And all weekend long, some some band, um, some band. Some mowers <laughs> at Martin Tavern and Garrett, just a short drive up full water. That show is also free and awesome. Love that place, love that bar. If you don't mind getting your boots muddy. Yeah. <laughs> if you didn't know, shows that don't suck, that term comes from Big Bob at Martin's. We uh, dedicate that to him because oh. anytime a band would play there, we would he would always tell them, just don't suck. <laughs> he passed away a month or so ago and... Uh, I always wanted to, when we named this, I decided that this was for him. So, anybody watching that knows Big Bob, these are shows that don't suck. Uh, keep it going, we got. It's Memorial Day weekend, so yeah. go out Sunday night. We have the Taj Mahalics at last stream, 9 p.m., no cover. And Memorial Day Monday. Yeah, Jen Mill is hosting the Clam Jam, Jam featuring Quincy Sanders at 9 p.m. till 1 a.m. Actually, our guest is a part of that Clam yep, Jam, right? Yeah, Mo's a part of that. He's part of the... Host band that's there every night. Come watch us jam. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So get out to a show. Yeah, support live music, especially as it kicks into summer. You know, if you're not out of town, go support live music because this is a tougher time to get people out. So we want to keep live music going and, and keep shows going. So and also tell them. Tell them. You tell got them. it. Yeah. Say it the too. backstage pass. Says you, you got a backstage pass. <laughs> <laughs> we say that too much. We gotta say tell them that we sent you. Like Cino said, come to the show. 
Hey, Max said I could get him free. No, he didn't. <laughs> oh, well, I tell oh. you about free shows so you can get it. Oh, we got to back it up because I wrote some news down and I forgot to announce Rewind. it. Rewind. Rewind. Um, I saw a Facebook posting today that Sahaj from Raw says he's thinking of doing pre-orders for the brand new Raw record. Uh, but he would need at least a thousand pre-orders to be able to do this. He posted this on his wall today. So go look up Sahaj. Get on his Facebook wall. Tell him, heck yeah, you order it. Um, he's currently in the process of recording and I believe also producing Fort Wayne's very own Downstate. So that's exciting. I'm really excited to see what comes out of that next album. Um, also, with all my heart and soul, I would love for Sahaj to produce me. So Justin Bieber, sponsor me. <laughs> Sahaj. Please produce me. That is all. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. These that are is jokes. All, I joke, I joke, I kid. The next part of our show is kind the of. coolest part of the show in the world. Yes. We got our friend. We got our family. That's we right. got the chocolate in the s'mores. One and only Maurice Turner. See how high tech we are? This is how we transition, y'all. This is how we transition. This is how we transition. Hey, watch out. I know. <laughs> we have on our show. Maurice Turner, what's up, buddy? Yo, what's going on? <laughs> you don't really have to be that loud. <laughs> I know. So, you know, you know this guy? I do. Are you sure? I think so. How long have you known him? Um, we've known each other since Southside High School. Southside. South South <laughs> That's right. We were um in a few productions together there, right? Fame. <laughs> <laughs> now you guys do some more productions. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, all right, well, we're going to start off. I'm going to ask you, um, you are constantly out gigging, constantly, not just with the band. How many, about on average, how many nights a week do you gig? Um, I've seen about, at least about four to five nights a week. I'm out there just, just gigging with whoever. Like, like I said, my main band is S'mores right now, and we rock everywhere that we possibly can. Um, in this small state of Indiana, that is where we rock yeah. <laughs> and um and and uh, as far as the most shows are concerned and the clam jam and the mashup mafia and papa fresh and the tone junkies yeah. and, and and i play with mostly all these guys out here yeah. and I play with them on a random basis um you might catch me at certain jams like a and o sweet shop friday night over there, or the Thursday night jam over at the office tavern with the Poppin' Fresh band, right. or maybe the Tuesday night with G Money and Lee Lewis and those Whenever guys. Whenever he can hop there. on stage, he will. Trust yeah, me. it's kind of crazy. I kind of will do yeah, that. Yeah. I, I, I lose a lot of friends for that. I'm sorry, guys. No, I apologize. Yeah. That's what you love doing. It's so yeah, you know, and it's, it's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We know, <laughs> we know, of course, you're in the S'mores and you do the Mo Show um, currently. What are some bands that you were a part of in the past in Fort Wayne? Uh, the first band I actually ever had in this band, uh, this town, was an 18-piece jazz band, and basically it was from the South Side Jazz Band, <laughs> and we toured uh, about a couple places my senior year, and my first place that I actually ever played was the Embassy Theater. Oh wow! And we also opened Club Soda. Uh, back in the day, it was called Straight Cat Seven. It was a fun thing, man. It was just part of that jazz band. What else were great. some other bands that? Ultimate Jones uh, was one of my other first band. There was two Maurice's in that band. <laughs> and then there was Party House with uh, Scott Blinziski and Jeff Hendricks. And Party, Ho Party House was, ah, man, it was, it was the bee's knees. It sounds like a cool name. Yeah. Right. It like a fun time. Dude, that's all we did was party in the house. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> so who are some of your influences? So my influences? Um... Well, you got the usual suspects, Michael Jackson, James Brown, the Prince. But you now come in and now, you got to look at the kids that's doing it nowadays. You're looking at Pharrell Williams from NERD. And yeah. that, whole, that whole group right there has also been kicking for a long time. Um, you got Jamiroquai, who's out there, who's like one of my favorite artists right now, because this whole band just whoops ass <laughs> any other time. Um, but all the time since who I was actually, if my... If things would have happened the way I wanted them to in my life, <laughs> I would say, if my mom never got married, this uh, my band would have been Maurice White, which I would have been named after the guy from Earth, Wind & Fire, uh -huh. who was actually the lead singer from Earth, Wind & Fire, and that's who's my favorite band is of this time. Still. So wait, you could have been Maurice White instead of Maurice Turner? Do you remember? <laughs> the very first time of September? Come on, now! <laughs> uh, we 
we know that you are pretty much a jack of all trades. What instrument do you play? Tell I, uh, besides this little six string bo uh, grandfather's box guitar that I hold in my hand right here, <laughs> which still makes a lot of noise, I think. Um, I play. I, I started on guitar when I was um, 15. Just basically never took any lessons. I got a book. Dude said, "Here you go," and I was like, "Hey, there you go." And my first song was, um, I I think it was I can't remember at the time, <laughs> but it was a one of those songs. I was just like, "Really?" Uh, anyway, and then I I played trombone for the longest of the time. That's right. Uh, when I was in Geyer. Uh, started at sixth grade on up till then. Uh, drums came in later, and bass guitar, piano was fed in. Not that much, but I play if I see it. You so know what I'm saying? Just a just a list them again: guitar, guitar, bass, bass drums, drums, trombone, piano, piano, trombone. Yes. And probably a theremin or anything else you can get his hands on. I touch saxophone. <laughs> I touch trumpet. Yeah, that's life. right. I yeah. even touch the tuba. <laughs> It makes noise and he's us. Right. Um, tell us about your time with the Northside Wave of Destruction. Wave show of Distinction. Choir. Distinction. <laughs> wave of Distinction. Show choir. Oh, wave of Destruction. Tell, That's tell a show choir. That. All right. Um, it's not a metal band. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're going to destroy other show choirs. Destroy. Choir. That's what we do. <laughs> we collect grand champions on a daily. Yeah. <laughs> No, um, <laughs> still the wave of the wave of distinction show choir was actually um, brought in to play by Betty McKee back in 1981, and then I think she had a long time to play on it before uh, Margaret Buttermore came into it. And by the time 1998 was around, I got out of the show choir scene, which, which I was doing show choir over south side for the longest of the time, along with jazz band, chess, and key club, and cheerleading. <laughs> all this other shit. Yeah, seriously, I was a metal You should have been there. It's great. Anyway, <laughs> for one day, shut up. I was the mascot. You know this. I was the mascot. Hey, you. That's yes, right. <laughs> Blazers rule. <laughs> um, Northside High School Wave of Distinction Show Choir. Like I said, it's been around since 1981. I got myself into it back in 1999. After. I started working with my uncle Gordon Crawford over at Homestead High School, which he choreographed and also directed at the time the Homestead Class Royale and Homestead Girls All Girls Show Choir uh, Homestead Elite, and which they was basically an unstoppable show choir back in '99. And so was Northside at that time. Northside actually won their first grand champion back in 1997. Recently, guys, um, under your direction, they won something. A year ago, we won grand champion uh, at, I think it was Norwell High School or something like that. I can't remember it. We, we toured so many places, man. It's ridiculous. But uh, under my direction, we have five grand champions for choreographies and a couple of best band awards out there. And, uh, Northside is a traditional show choir here in Fort Wayne. It should be recognized as one of the top show choirs here in Indiana, okay. along with Bishop Lures and uh, Northrop and S Southside when they did have one. Um, and actually Bishop Dwinger just came in on the scene too and it's actually everybody has a great program out there and I wish everybody all the best of luck of coming on. I have recently have just retired from the North uh, from the North Side Show Choir after 14 years wow. of like, doing this for the longest time. Uh, I let it go. Um, but it's, it was a good time. Good, good. <laughs> um, so they know you're with the S'mores now, and, but tell, tell them about uh, what you do with the Mo Show. Okay. I do a lot of stuff with the Mo Show besides just play this little here guitar and we're just having acoustics today because that's what we're set up for. But like well, she would, she wouldn't actually let me bring my like five thousand dollar loop station with my two thousand dollar grand cores that has to plug into every slot that we ever have on the phone. That's what you said. Um, uh, no, seriously. Uh, no, I have a loop station that I use. Is basically I can basically hum my own stuff over, beatbox my own stuff over, so I make my own drum beats and sounds and I sing my own songs and the most show takes place at Hall, Don Hall's factory on uh, Coliseum and Coldwater Road 
um, on Friday on fr some Friday nights. Sometimes I'm not currently booked there right now, but if you go ahead and check your local Facebook on Maurice Turner or what's Facebook up? or what's up dot okay. com sometime. Uh, when, you <laughs> when, you when we remember to post stuff, we will post stuff. <laughs> Well, most of them are Facebook fans, so I started posting stuff on Facebook for everybody to know some of the most shows are happening. Uh, some more shows are happening all the time. You will see us on Facebook via Twitter. Go some more's universe. <laughs> all right, we want to hear a little bit from you, so we're gonna get out of the way and we're gonna have Mo play a song once again, ladies and gentlemen. You have a backstage pass for Maurice Turner. The Mo Show. Yeah. San Diego. <laughs>